Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our uh, webinar this morning uh, regarding uh, technology selection and deployment best practices with respect to service management. Uh, I'd like to start off by uh, kind of setting a context for our discussion uh, and our interaction uh, over the next hour. Uh, I'll be uh, handling the initial uh, 15 to 20 minutes of our discussion, setting a context uh, for some of the best practices that we are observing and we are seeing with a number of clients on a global scale, uh, as well as, uh, in essence, talk about the uh, specific topics that you may have an interest in in terms of selection of specific technologies. Uh, I'll be turning over the presentation over to uh, Shirini uh, about 25 minutes or so, and he'll take us through some very specific examples of how technologies are being deployed today uh, to solve the specific problems uh, for organizations and how they're creating value. Uh, so let me start uh, with our agenda, if I may. Uh, so uh, the sequence will be to talk about uh, the ITIL framework very briefly to have a context for our discussion, talk about uh, the concept of the business service view and why is that becoming a critical component uh, for many service management initiatives and why it's a critical success factor. Talk about specifically how to approach and think about building a business case to be able to successfully justify the investment. Uh, talk about some of the common challenges that we observe with a number of clients and uh, uh, the research that's been done in that area and ways that those could be addressed. Then we will jump into a specific technologies. In this case, today's uh, session will be talking about service monitoring and how is that different than the traditional uh, element management and component monitoring and why is that an advantage for many organizations. We will talk about a couple of different organizations uh, who are actually using this type of an approach and what benefits they're seeing and we'll end uh, with some key recommendations on how to think about your technology investment in service management. Uh, what we hope to leave you with today uh, is uh, an understanding and discussion around what are the highest impact technologies uh, for your ITIL, IT service management initiative? Uh, how to think about prioritizing and the criteria for prioritizing for those opportunities? Uh, talk about the relationship between process definition and technology deployment. Uh, a lot of organizations uh, expect a certain sequence, so we'll talk about that briefly. Uh, we'll talk about technology vendors and products that are in the market that are addressing some of the pain points and opportunities uh, that are available to us. We'll talk about common barriers and hopefully you'll be able to take some ideas away on how to deal with them and how to measure the impact and success of your investments. Uh, so with that, uh, again, very briefly, ITIL, as uh, hopefully most of you are aware, uh, has been around since the early 80s, the result of the work that the UK government started to be able to document and standardize IT operations practices across the entire government. Uh, that work led into 42 books that were published in about 87 time frame. Version 2 consolidated that work into seven books and two specific books uh, talking about 10 process areas and one function. And our latest uh, version, version 3, was released uh, a year ago in May of 2007 that in essence brought another view and that's the service lifecycle management view. And it is that view that I, I believe is going to be important and pertinent to our discussions of how to think about technology investments and where the benefits are. Uh, of course, ITIL uh, brings a series of principles and ideologies in terms of how to manage IT. It is obviously process-oriented in its focus and cuts across the functional silos and technology groups and platforms. It is very much focused on what the customer sees and expects, so it is bringing the idea of customer centricity to the IT organization. It develops a common language for all of us to be able to work together effectively and creates a basis for fact-based decision-making and delivering against promises that we have for the business entities. Version 3, uh, hopefully by now you've seen and read a lot about the framework. In essence, uh, it expanded on some of the key concepts that were introduced under version 2 and the 10 processes. Uh, there's now five books available, the life cycle perspective starting from service strategy over to designing services, transitioning them into production, and obviously finally operating them in uh, production. Uh, and also there's a dedicated uh, volume to how to think about continual service improvement and process improvement. It also takes into consideration all of the other public domain frameworks that have had a contribution uh, to the advancement of service management as well as other IT-related disciplines. 
Uh, on slide seven, what you see is a quick overview of the new processes that are available to us for guidance within version three. Uh, you will notice that the 10 core processes and the service desk function still exists. However, those concepts have been expanded and there is now uh, a higher level guidance available in each one of the areas. So we have now somewhere around 26 processes depending on how you look at the uh, makeup of the lifecycle framework and those have been uh, highlighted for you in this graphic. And the basic idea is that we want to make sure that we have a full understanding of our service strategy, specifically what are the services that we provide to our business customers, and the discipline of having a service portfolio that allows us to manage our overall service management capability, the idea of being able to manage demand by understanding the demand for specific services that are developed and being able to account financially and charge for those specific services. Uh, once we have an idea of our service portfolio, there is specific guidance around designing services, which encompasses all of the domains that you have seen before under version two, under service delivery, concepts of availability, capacity, service continuity, security, and now the new supplier management guidance. Then over to service transition, again, expanding on change, release, and config to give us a life cycle view of how to think about preparing for and eventually moving uh, uh, new services into production and the idea of having a full strategy around knowledge management. And then finally, service operations deals with our traditional incident problem. However, incidents are now focused on disruptions on services and you have a specific guidance around request fulfillment, access management, and events management, and also more guidance around other functions such as technical management, uh, application management, and so on and so forth. And of course, uh, there's a specific guidance around continual service improvement now. now Specifically for this session, I'd like to spend a minute talking about what is a service because that is fundamentally, in our view, the key approach to making sure that the investments that you make are focused uh, on the right set of pain points within the organization and they can address the business benefits that you need. Uh, so under version two, uh, the definition that was very common was a service is one or more IT systems that enable a business process. And that's as far as it went in defining services. So for many, a service catalog meant a series of uh, technical services. Under ISO version 3, there is now clear guidance and more specific guidance around what a service is and the distinction between business service and technical services or IT services that underpin it. So under ISO version 3, a service is a means of delivering value by facilitating the outcomes the customer wants to achieve uh, in, without ownership of specific risks and costs. So what that means is the focus now is turning to business process and the outcomes they're looking for, and all of the IT assets and IT services underpin that, and the ability to manage those services becomes the key focal point for the initiative. Uh, slide nine talks to the common environment that uh, most of us deal with, and that is that most of our applications and services run across a variety of technology platforms as well as uh, technology groups. And the challenge is that every one of these organizations are managed by the different specialist groups and managers who are focused on their silo. And what happens is when we try to understand what has gone wrong with a particular service, it is very difficult to easily pinpoint the issue within that environment. And also, another factor that uh, complexity that it brings is the fact that even though you may have designed your mainframe or mid-range systems at 99 or 99.99% 99 .99 availability, by the time a service is actually delivered to the end user, they're going across so many components that it is the result of all of the different components availability factor that they see. So while the major components may be sitting at 99% and everyone says my stuff is working great, what the end user sees is something less than 91% availability in a lot of cases. Understanding this view and being able to design for the availability that you have in mind is very critical and we'll talk today specifically on how you could achieve this objective uh, going forward. Uh, more of 